had your breakfast, Timmy. You know you have. You need to make notes to yourself like I do so you remember. Eggs, cheese, cotton wool, savings book. Now, why did I put that, Timmy? Oh, of course, so I remember. To take a tea, floor cloth. Right. Shan't be long, Timmy. Oh, you're as bad as me, Timmy. Not so cold, is it? And how's Kieran? Still good as gold? Oh, yes. <laughs> He's cut another tooth. He has. Clever boy. Get a move on, missus. Yes, I have. I forget my head next. What will Timmy say? My purse and my savings book. Oh, no. My key, too. I'll soon be a candidate for the funny farm. I did remember to give Mrs. Jackson back my key, didn't I? from there. Stars, Kieran was It's your anchor. Ow. Would you go, Ace over Diamond? Yeah. You panicked, you see. You weren't expecting me back, were you? And I forgetting my purse, and it's sitting on the table just waiting for you. Can you move? I wouldn't be sitting here, would I, if I could? I reckon I've busted. Oh, Ow. It mayn't be as bad as you think. We can't just leave you sitting here, can we? Come on. Up, Sir Daisy. Oh, oh. I say one thing for you. You saved me the trouble of bothering Mrs. Jackson for my spare key, and that's rather a relief because I've had to ask her about it five times in the past three weeks. She says she doesn't mind, but I think I'm in trouble too. What are you going to do? Call the police? Uh, we'll talk about that later. First, we must see to your poor anchor. That's the most important thing, surely, isn't it? Oh, you young people today, desperate, aren't you? Come on, in we go. Oh, oh dear. Hang on. Oh. Here we are. already. Oh, it'll be as big as a football if we don't bathe it. Bleeding thing? No, it's not bleeding. There's no abrasion at all. Now, you sit still. 
What are you going to do? Call the law? No, I'm not. Hot water, Epsom salts. You just rest. Ow. Typical young man, Timmy. Rootless. A dandel. But we must do our best for him. As Mr. Grady always said, there's some good somewhere in everyone. Is that your old man? Yes. That's Oliver, my late husband. He died two years ago this oh. April. Oh, such a good man. He was a social worker. A soft cop. I beg your pardon. That's what they call all them people from the welfare. Soft cops. In we go. Ow! A grown lad like you, it's not that hot. It is. Oh! Hold still. Oh, dear. That's mine. Indeed it is. And sadly so. Oh. What an awful thing. You're getting used to the hot water. Sort of, yeah. Good. Yeah, you put cold water on sprains. I don't. Everybody I know does. Now, why? Is a nice lad like you carrying a weapon like this? Protection. Is that so? And from what, may I ask? Old ladies like me, hmm? No. But, well... That's the trouble with you young people today. Knives, gangs, violence. Whatever goes on in your heads, I don't know. It was never like that when I was young. Oh, we had our share of crime. But it was never so brutal. My husband was brutally mugged. He died of a heart attack three days later. I didn't do it. Did I say you did? But the police never caught them. I thought you recognised Oliver. I didn't. When did I? Just now. I didn't. Well, now we can dry your foot and strap it up. Ah. How does it feel? A bit better. Good. I was old lady Sisson's housekeeper. I used to nurse her sometimes. Who? Oh? You never heard of the Sissons? Lord Sisson, the merchant banker, quite one of the richest men in Britain. In later life, he took up prison reform, but after a time he gave it up, appalled by human nature. He said to me, Mrs. Grady, it's no use. The prisoners are vicious, unrepentant. But so are we. It's a vicious circle, vicious. That's what he said to me. They were very kind to me, the Sissons. You want to know if I'm going to tell the police, don't you? Suppose I don't. You reckon you won't? Oh, I'm not saying that. Not just yet. I don't want to. I want to believe the best of you. I don't even know your name. Rex. Rex what? Tobin. Well, Mr. Tobin, if I let you go, how do I know you won't rob someone else? Possibly commit grievous bodily harm as well, on your way home. Well, I mightn't. 
You mean you could reform? Don't know. Would you like to? Well, I... I think you're halfway there. Now, how would you feel, for example, if I were to take a club and beat you? <laughs> I shan't. Don't worry. But I'd have every justification, wouldn't I? You tried to break in. Indeed, you succeeded. My purse and savings book were in the kitchen. If you had taken them, oh, what would I have done? Yeah, well, I didn't, did I? You intended to. I can't help it. But you can. It's the way things are. I mean, that's how it is, the luck of the draw. Has it never occurred to you, Mr Tobin, you might try to make the world a better place rather than a worse one? But how? These things happen, don't they? Of course. Crime is as old as Cain and Abel. But what I'm saying is there's no need. There. That'll give you some support. Can you stand, do you think? Come on. Have a go. Ooh. Oh, still tender. Well, yeah. you just rest it and I make you a nice cup of tea. Hmm? Yeah, hang on a minute, missus. What? Well, no one's ever talked to me like that, you know. Yeah, you know, I mean, the teachers and that, they talked. But it was easy for them, wasn't it? But you, I was going to rob you, wasn't I? Will it be bad for you if I turn you over to the police? Shop you, isn't that what you say? And my meaning is, I dare say you have a record. Oh. But you've given me out, Missus. Do you really mean that? Yeah. Well, I never. I mean, you didn't preach. Not really. I mean, you helped me ankle all this. How old are you? Nineteen. That wasn't me, I swear. Oh, I'm so glad. Nineteen. All your life ahead of you. But if I let you go, how can I be sure that some innocent person won't suffer? Well, I don't know. But I could try, couldn't I? If you believed in me. Nobody ever has before. But are you man enough to keep a promise? All, all I'm saying is, I'd try. Try to mend your ways. Lead a decent life. Yeah, I will. You see, you're right. I know you are. I've got someone now who really wants me to go straight. Haven't I? Yes. Like Mr Grady, my late husband, I'm looking for the good in you. And I think I can see it. So you ain't going to turn me in then? Not if you promise. Promise me... Uh, right, it's a deal. I promise. Cross me out and hope to die. <laughs> no more flick knives, no more violence, no more thieving. That's asking a lot. The excitement's like a drug, I believe. That's what Lord Sisson told me about those unfortunates he used to visit in prison. I'm going straight. How's that? Oh, that's nice. Well done, Rex. I may call you Rex, hmm? Of course you can, yeah. And any time you feel like going back to your old ways, you'll come and have a chat with me, hmm? Yeah, good idea. I will. You'll see me, right? Right. I'll make that tea then. Stupid. 
don't count. A reformed young man, Timmy. Take sugar, Rex. You won't wait for your tea. Uh, no. But why? You can't go like that. I can. I can walk on the bandage. Are you all right? What is it? I've got to go. Oh, no, you... Oh, yeah, missus. Put that terrible thing away. You promised. Look, I don't want to hurt you. Get out of the way. I'm off, right? On me way. Leaving nice and quiet, right? You keep your mouth shut till I'm away. You gave me a break, now I'm giving you one, OK? But... Uh, you have... You say anything to the cops and I'll come back and carve you, right? Rex, you promised... Get away. Oh, no. Damn him. No. He was tempted. Fell. And I ask you, Timmy, who wouldn't be tempted? Right. That's him. That's the kid who stole the milk. Black jacket, beige strides. That's him. Cool. You're keen this morning, aren't you? Butler milk. Crime's crime. The lady in the flats was right to report him. He threw the empty over her wall. It could have hit someone. Charmer, isn't he? Oh, well, what happened to your foot, son? Dorky. Offensive weapon. Money. Gum. Chewy. Boot. One. And... What the heck's this? Well, well. Here, let's have a look at that, Sarge. All 
that from a bottle of milk? I'll just check this. <laughs> yes. Sit down now, son. Well, I've never seen any of that stuff. Wait. Picked him up in Askham Street. Right. Sir? All right, Sergeant, sit down. So. You pulled the Sisson's job, eh? You what? Oh, come on, son, this. This belonged to Lady Sisson in Grosvenor Square. Where's that? Mayfair. <laughs> Me do a job in Mayfair? Yes, you, why not? Never. Tough luck, son, start talking. I've never seen it before. Try another. But I told you, I've never seen it before. I found it in the street. I was going to hand it in. You found it in the street? I remember Lady Sisson wearing this. And I remember thinking, Timmy, one must have a nest egg in this uncertain world. <sighs> Poor Rex. All bash and bang, Timmy. No finesse at all. <laughs> 